Hello, welcome to the Breck Buzz. The show is going to be telling you all about what's been happening in the town of Breckenridge government over the last month. And I have two great guests with me today. Wendy Wolf, Councilwoman for the Town of Breckenridge, and Elizabeth Lawrence, Councilwoman for the Town of Breckenridge. And we want to welcome you both thank and you. thank you for Thanks. joining us. Have uh, quite a few things to cover. A lot of excitement this past uh, uh, November and almost, you know, almost into Christmas yeah. now, boy. Um, let's start off with a couple of task force type things that the council has formed. And the first one is what we call the business task force. And they were assigned a task to take a look at our sign code because of some issues. So, uh, Elizabeth, why don't you kick it off by what were the issues and kind of what was the uh, recommendation out of the task force, and then I'll kick it to Wendy to talk about where the council and the plan commission are. Sure. So we had some businesses using sandwich boards down on Main Street, and they were getting in trouble for that because that is against our sign code. But then we had some discussion that maybe some sandwich boards would be okay. We couldn't really make a decision. We formed a task force. They looked at it further. They came with some recommendations. We asked our planning commission to look at those recommendations. They were based on size, where they would be allowed, etc. And the planning commission came back and said, absolutely not. <laughs> so now council is in a little bit of a quandary as to what we will do uh, if, if we are going to say absolutely not to sandwich boards in terms of clutter, if it's cluttering our main street, if we will allow them, if that's more pro-business, if that's a good way to advertise, and some people like that it's a kind of quaint look. So it's really been difficult and lots of discussion and it's hard to know the right thing to do on this. Right. Mm -hmm. It's also the outside downtown and the downtown that are affected by this. Right. So kind of help crystallize the arguments. What's, well, what's really the issues that people are, are worried about? Yeah, you know, you have to start with the fact that we do have a very strict sign code and, and it's there for a, a very important reason. We have a great character in our town. We have been very conservative. Uh, we've really regulated the, um, the, the size of signs and what the signs are made of and the materials. And it's really helped to give us a very clean look in Breckenridge and you know, people have responded very positively. And if you think to some other towns you've been in where kind of anything goes and you know, you think of that by contrast. So, um, you know, and, and this was decided a very long time ago, years now, I can't you know, cite the year, but it's been in existence for a long, long time. And, and you know, so, so you know, do you want to let go of that good character look that we've built up over the years and we're very protective in the historic district. You mentioned that, you know, there's inside the historic district and then there's the conservation district, which is the perimeter outside of that. Um, we're usually a little bit less strict as we get into the conservation district, but still we have a strict sign code that goes all the way through the conservation district. So. So where we are now is that a, a, a lot of folks are concerned about, you know, if you start allowing proliferation, that's the word, proliferation of these signs, where does it stop? And the it, it Planning Commission, I think a great question was asked, which is, you know, what's the magnitude? How, how many signs could you possibly right. have on right. Main Street if, you know, proliferation were to happen and this got and going. took advantage of yeah. it. Yeah, right. well, the, the answer is perhaps as many as 150. You know, yikes, that's mm -hmm. a lot of signs. Well, you know, I was thinking, well, okay, so, you know, that's the worst case. But what if it were half of that? That's still a lot of signs. You yeah. know, so, so, so now I think the council really will have to wrestle with, um, you know, none of us were really hated seeing a couple of, tasteful signs out there. Right. You know, there's, there can be nice um, sandwich board signs that have the chalk written on them and they'll tell you about a special or two. And I mean, frankly, is it that bad? And, and you know, so you think of that, but then you start thinking about more and more and more and more and more. So that's, that's what we're gonna have to wrestle with. And I, I, I think the Planning Commission had good instincts there. I mean, I think they were thinking about, you know, the fact that it has been strict and we've done well with that. and. We're giving up a lot if we start getting into this proliferation. So I did have someone suggest that we go with masking tape. We'd have to do paint this time of year in the snow, <laughs> but you know, mark it out on the sidewalk where they would be allowed. And imagine, and if oh, you are running into that, them. how that would 
be and look. And I was like, maybe that's a good way to, yeah. when you get that visual idea of how many it would yeah. be. So, you know, we don't want to um, upset our businesses, but on the other hand, we do have this very quaint, special downtown that we've worked really hard to make it look a certain way. And people love that. Yeah. Yeah. So probably in January, the council will take this up after hearing from your task force and hearing from the plan commission. Right. Boy, you guys got a tough job. <laughs> <laughs> Task Force number two, a very exciting one, actually. We call it the Parking Task Force, but it's actually Parking and Transit. Right. Wendy, I'm gonna let you jump all over this one. Okay. Uh, what, what's our challenge? Why are we forming this task force? And what do we hope to get done? Well, you know, parking is on everybody's mind. It's a, certainly a, a, an issue in the town of Breckenridge, and it affects, you know, it, 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 the ski areas involved in helping to find a solution to this, uh, as well as the, the town of Breckenridge. And, um, you know, it's, it's, it's a long-term problem with hopefully some long-term solutions out there. And, and this council is determined to start looking hard at how we get at the solutions for parking. Um, we started, the transit weighs into this. You know, we're at the point now where, you know, there is a desire to overall reduce the usage of cars, encourage people to use more <clears throat> transit. And, not even have as many cars to park, and that would be ideal. Um, so we have a, a, we have an annual transit study done, and this transit study showed some really nice, interesting trends. So there, there's, there's, there, we are down 11 percent over last year, uh, or we're up in usage. Right. I guess I should mm -hmm. say it the other way. We're we're up in usage 11 percent year over year in in people using transit. We looked at who uses transit. It's not everybody. Um, our guests use it, but, but we have a lot of core of local workforce that uses the transit, and when they use it, they use it a lot. So our transit is becoming um, a, a very much a part of the equation, and that's, that's a good thing. Um, parking, but we need to figure out, <laughs> there's, you know, there's the guest users, there's the, the part-time homeowners that come in and park, there's you know, the, you know, the workforce that parks. We know through our research that the number one place that locals like to park to ski is Main Street. Um, that's probably not how we want Main Street <laughs> to be used for the, for the most part. But what to do about that? People want to park close to their work. You know, don't blame them. You know, we all do. Um, so we have a lot of different users and a lot of things to sort out. So we decided as a council to form a task force to take a look at the parking issues uh, throughout town and get some input from all these different folks in the businesses and see what they have to say about it. So that first meeting was today. Um, so I'm anxious to hear, hear well, how they do. <laughs> how, how all that I don't went. think they solved everything in I, one meeting. Probably not in one meeting. It's going to go for, I mean, this is going to be a long-term yeah, discussion definitely. on how to start solving this. But, but we know a lot more. We've done a lot of research. We've taken looks at F-Lot and what that might become if we were to uh, make that a parking structure. We know what it might cost us, and it's a lot of money. Uh, but I think all things are on the table. I think that's exciting. I, I, you put it all on the table, and you get a lot of good, smart people to look at it, and hopefully we come up with some solutions. Yeah, our parking task force you know, is headed up by our police chief, mm -hmm. and she did a really good job of reaching out to the business community, and it consists of a wide variety. We have quite a few realtors because they have interesting parking problems in that they're coming in and out of their office, but yet they need to go and show property. Uh, restaurant people, retail, lots of downtown business people that can ski area representation, et cetera, that hopefully we'll all be able to add to this conversation and can really help us figure out the best way to do it. And we're gonna share a lot of information with them, how much it would cost to do a bus that comes into town every 10 minutes for our employees. You know, we're gonna share that information with them. They can help us determine, would people use that? Is that a value? Because we would hate to spend that money and no one ride it. Yeah, and interestingly, the council has not told the committee any expectations other than one. And that one expectation was about the guest. And what is yes. that? Yep. What is, what is the goal that, that the council hopes to achieve by this, by this effort mm -hmm. related to the guest? Right. Well, and it's, you know, we, the, the guest needs to be able to come in town and park, you know, to, to, to go to our retail, uh, to, to go to the restaurants and, and to 
um, you know, access the, the town and if the, the town parking is being completely utilized by the locals and by the workforce, um, that's an issue with turnover of parking and, 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 you know, so, but we also said that there are times when the locals are the yes. guests. Very if you're going so. out to dinner, whether you're a local or a guest, mm -hmm. you know, you're, you're a customer. You're spending money. So <laughs> that's, and, and, and we just have to, you know, we have to take into account what drives the economy of our town and how we should be working with each of the user groups to right. appropriately, uh, you know, we, we, don't, we don't want the message to go out that we think the workforce is not nearly as important and they ought to park way out on the perimeter. Um, none of us would want that as, as the ultimate solution. So as Elizabeth said, you know, if, if it takes shuttling or whatever it takes these days to get people to flow in and out of the town appropriately, we've got to look at that. You know, maybe, and we don't know what the solutions are gonna be. Right. It's gonna right. probably be a combination of things. And we identified some early things we can do that people will start to see, I believe this winter, um, increased wayfinding, better signage. We've already seen better signage just for the gondola lots. That will help our guests be able to find those easier. And that's been in great partnership with the ski area, I think, on working on better signage for this upcoming season. Right. So good parking, good transit, hopefully helps better congestion, right. less congestion. We have, we, well, and, and the, <laughs> the one thing we didn't say is, is, is a lot of our problem is the fact that people drive around to, to find, find a stuff. parking right. place. So that leads to the congestion in town. Right. You know, if we could somehow, through technology or whatever it takes there, get people to get directly to where there's a parking place rather than to circle town three times, mm -hmm. you know, whatever they're doing, um, I think that would improve our sure. situation. You know, our town is not that big, and when we swell to this, you know, the, the very crunch times, circulating is a big issue. So and we will have some parking available this year that we did not have last winter. Right. And I think that's important to yeah, know. Because of all so, the construction and everything. Well, construction, the ice castles will not be going on. That opens up some yeah. significant parking spots. Right. Interesting stat that I, I know Go Breck uh, generated for us was what's lost when you have a downtown parking space taken up by other than a customer. And it's close to $200 a day. Right. I, of right, lost you know, right. Uh, business. For, revenue, for, revenue coming out right out of uh, the shops on Main Street. Street. Yeah. So, yeah. Some important issues. Uh, we're hopeful for this summer to come together and have some pretty good discussions about a possible plan. I, you know, I think we should definitely aim for that. <laughs> so I think it's going to be a lot of back and back forth, forth discussion, but um, <laughs> I, 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 you know, I think we should. I All think we should and really maybe open up our checkbook. Yeah. Good. Uh, we, uh, Wendy mentioned the survey of the transit. Anything you want to add to the to what, oh, what you the saw? The transit survey. Gosh, it was so wonderful. I really hope we can put it on our website and anyone can read that. It was really interesting. But what really stuck out to me, if someone rides it. They ride it all the time. They have very, very committed uh, riders. And people really had such positive things to say about our local transit and the people that work there. And I think that is a true testament to how well it's being run. Mm -hmm. Sometimes it gets a little confusing of which bus you're on. Right. Some of that came out too with. Uh, yeah, yeah. You know, and well, and I even admitted that I had trouble figuring out, even reading the survey, which bus is this, the purple route, the yellow route, et cetera, would have to go online, but um, really positive things. And I think we can look and see some trends of how we can get some different user groups to use it more. Good, great. Uh, very exciting project, and it's certainly a very important need that we're hearing a lot about, about rental housing. Yes. But we seem to be maybe a little bit ahead of the game, but not much with uh, our Pinewood 2. Pinewood 2 is a new project that's going to be hopefully off the ground this year. Yeah. What's that all about? On Airport Road. We've talked about it before, but it's so exciting that now we've seen the plans and it's about to get started. And more than ever this year, we have seen such a strong need for rental housing. I mean, every day online there's posts and, you know, it's not a myth. There was really a guy standing downtown 
holding a sign, mm -hmm. have job, need housing. And we can see, and so we're gonna commit to this, Pinewood 2 on Airport Road and 45 units, a mix of studios and one bedrooms. They're really going to be fantastic. I loved looking at the plans, flipping through there. It's like, oh, this is a great place to live. Very usable space, really well thought out for living in the mountains with storage and coat hooks built in and benches to sit down and take off your boots and really, a great area of town to be in as well. They're going to add a new bus stop there. You're close to the grocery store. You can get to work. I mean, it's really wonderful. On the transit rec center. Yeah. 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 All good. Yeah. Uh, the council, in addition to that, said that's not enough. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, right. I mean, Forty-five <laughs> units. Um, you know, I, I think uh, we all wish that it had a zero behind it. Right. It's, it's a. Uh, there is a huge demand for rental right now, and it just can't come soon enough. So uh, we did discuss uh, what can we do to maybe accelerate some plans on Block 11, take another look at where we are with McCain, um, look particularly at those areas, you know, uh, on Block 11 there's been a master plan for some time, and, 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 and uh, toward CMC, it's always been planned to have a bit more density in that area and, and more density would bode well for uh, apartment living. And so what can we do to perhaps accelerate that end of the project and bring some more um, uh, Pinewood two type modeling of, uh, of housing accommodation to that? Um, so we're gonna look at that and try to start that as soon as possible. I think everybody unanimously on council felt strongly about getting that done. Um, so I would hope maybe, I mean, you, you were talking to us about the fact that we still need to move some dirt around out there and <laughs> do some, yeah, yeah, but I mean, that could start as soon as next summer and yep. plans could get going uh, concurrently with that. And perhaps we can really accelerate and get some, some plans going for affordable housing. Still, I, if we turned it all on, we still, pro we have this season and probably next season Correct. to get through before you know, so I, I feel, you know, I, we, I, I go to parties right now dur during this Christmas season and you're hearing a lot of what can the town do to help with uh, rental. Units. I think it's important to note that we are committed as a council. We want people to be able to live and work in Breckenridge and keep our workforce local. And that's something we're committed to. So if we need to accelerate this, now's the time to do it. And these rentals are really for a different AMI, lower AMI, truly for our workforce. And Wendy, as we talked about, these rental prices are really attractive. Oh, yeah. I mean, we're looking at under $1,000 a month to get people in there. So I think it's really going to fill a great need because I'm seeing two bedroom places online for $1,900 a month and things like that, $2,000 a month. I mean, just really crazy yeah. prices. And so we really want to be committed to keeping good, sustainable workforce. Great, great. It's great that we have a little bit of land to work with. Too. Yeah, they thank you. Yes, yeah. we're lucky. We're going to take a quick break. We'll be right back to highlight a few other things that have been happening last month in the town of Breckenridge town government. Welcome back to the Breck Buzz. Uh, we're going to jump right back into a few quickie items. Uh, always got to talk about marijuana, at least once a show. <laughs> uh, we all know there's a ballot question coming right. up. We'll know the results after this show, but we did something else. It was called a moratorium. Right. Not about our current businesses, but about other businesses. What, why was that important? Right. Well, um, it, it's to um, control the amount of licensees or licenses that are available in the town of Breckenridge. And uh, we currently have five active licenses in the town of Breckenridge. And so the council was asked, you know, do because uh, all of that regulation comes to us as the town to, to decide. And so we were asked, do we want to accept applications for uh, additional licenses and the t town council recommended that we wait till we get through this vote and kind of see where we are reassess um, and so we put a moratorium on it until uh, July the 1st um, we can revisit that at any time so but but of course you know the town with would have been taking licenses uh, I believe right after the first January, of the year mm -hmm. if if we had not put this moratorium on and um, so that's just too much. It's too much on the plate for, for right now. So we just kind of you know postponed that till uh, uh, um, July 1 and we'll see. We may visit revisit that just right. in a couple of months. And it probably fits well because the council had never resolved their discussion about a cap. Correct, but also uh, we were not going to have a meeting prior 
to January 1st to have two readings to really make a decision. So that's why we said, let's push this out till July. There's no need before then for any more businesses. And like Wendy said, we can talk about it in February if we want mm -hmm. and start making some decisions. But just to be fair to our staff and also give us time to digest the election results. Good. Our Main Street Park. I don't have yes. to call it Main Street Park no, anymore. No, it has a name. There you go. What is it all about? Prospector Park. <laughs> Yes, so in that park, it's going to have a statue that's going to be called Tom's Baby Statue, donated by the Dudick family. And that statue, I'm sure we've talked about it on this show before, but people are going to be able to come up and rub the golden nugget for luck. It's going to be a great life-size statue and a really wonderful placement in that park. And so we had lots of different names through Engage Breckenridge that people suggested. And what we came to with at Council is you know what, Tom's baby, that's about mining. So let's name this park, have to do with our mining heritage. So we threw out a couple of different names, Gold Nugget Park, Tom's Baby Park, which is hard to say, Miner's Park. And Aaron came up with Prospector Park, which is just wonderful. Easy, short, you know, anyone that knows the history of Breckenridge, prospectors are how we got here. Mm. So yeah, good name for it. And it had a nice linkage up to Carter Museum. Yeah, it does. Yes. Yeah, yeah, I know it is a good idea. The, the longer I, I think about that name, the more I have liked it too. So I think we're onto a good thing. Great. So if, when you see the park next spring, which actually it, it, it will, it actually has the part of it in the sidewalk, you'll be seeing a sign up that talks about Prospector Park. Yeah. And and some of the history. It looks really great so right. far. That. Uh, we've talked about the budget over the last couple of shows because that is a process that the council goes through. You finally approved it. Hey, we did. Yeah. <laughs> uh, any quick highlights that uh, just to remind the public what uh, what are some pieces of it? Yeah. Well, you know, we um, have the biggest piece is that we have done well this year and, and, and as a town, and um, I think t thanks to the good hardworking staff who. You know, forecasts that and keeps us in line and um, you know so we've done well at making money but this council and council previously have done well at spending money too so, <laughs> <laughs> so so we will end this year at around a 22 million dollar fund balance um, with if everything goes well this next year we'll add about 21 million dollars to that we'll spend about 21 million dollars and then we'll be back to our 22 million dollar <laughs> fund balance and that's an interesting way to think about the whole thing um, one of the highlights of that is how we spend our money on in capital funds and and we're projecting to spend about seven million dollars in capital projects in this next year and there's some great capital projects in that the biggest one being looking at more river blue river restoration down around uh, the McCain property and um, this has been on the council's plate for some time and um, it's really exciting uh, open space is going to help fund a portion of that and we in this next council meeting I will be looking at that master right. plan of the mm -hmm. river to really understand what the opportunities are there to bring that river but you know parts of that river for people who are not so familiar parts of that river go under the rock right disappears Disappear. gone mm -hmm. Um, and so, you know, the, the goal will be to bring it all back to more of what it was 100 years ago. And, and um, so that's an exciting project. That's about, with the open space uh, funds, about $2 million worth of right. capital funding. And then the, uh, um, a couple other highlights in that capital funds are more heated sidewalks in town. <laughs> You know, given how we started this year, <laughs> oh, I think that's... Once I walk, work, work really well. <laughs> yeah, yeah. And people have noticed the, the Lincoln um, Street, Street sidewalk is exciting. You know, that's, it's clear. I love so, it. It's yeah. right outside my office door. Yeah. And it's in the shade, too. So <laughs> yeah, yeah. so, so we, we know that's working, and it can work on the other side streets, so, so that, that's in the capital budget. The other thing that's exciting is uh, the, the medians heading down toward Coin Valley Road will be improved. Uh, people have started to see what we, last fall before it snowed, we got a little bit of that done, but there's much more to come on that to make that, those medians really. So no, more weeds? no more weeds? <laughs> no more weeds. <laughs> Let's hope now. <laughs> but interestingly about the median, we were going to do that in 2016 that part between Valley Brook and Coin Valley and we decided let's go ahead and get it done this year. We have the funds and I think people are ready for that construction to start to be over with. Plus it'll look so nice when it's all completed and done together. So I'm glad we decided to go ahead and 
knock that one out. Yeah. yeah. Yeah, I think so. You know, I think it's really important always to mention that our town's revenues are driven by sales tax. Mm -hmm. So our uh, tourist economy pays for a lot. We have property tax, but that is not the main driver. Right. About a third of our revenues come from sales tax, and so uh, so so our it's a healthy uh, budget. It's a healthy economy right now, and and uh, we have put money away for rainy day type things, and right. town has been very prudent in that, and yet we still have good revenue and good, you know, lots and lots of things we want to spend money on, not want to, but need to, to keep our economy going, going. well. So. Right. No tax increases, but there are a little bit of increases, particularly in our water fund. Right. Uh, water fund, so that's going to go at 5% business and residential water rates, people are going to see on their bill. That needed to be done. Our water rates have historically been really low, but we're looking at building a second water plant in the future. We've talked about that before, and it's really time to start setting the money aside for that. Secondly, um, another part of that is our PIF fees, which are the public improvement, help me. Yeah, basically, no. we call it a tap fee. Tap fee, perfect. perfect. New Thank construction. You. Yes, mm -hmm. for new construction. So <clears throat> those are going to go up 10%. There's a little bit of discussion there. Wendy and I weren't in total agreement with that. We do understand the need that it, it needs to go up to help pay for the second water plant. But the negative reaction is that it might make it hard for new businesses, say a new restaurant to open up. And we do not wanna look unfriendly to young entrepreneurs that might wanna open a restaurant. But the reality of it is we need a second water plant and this is going to be one of the ways that we have to get it. Right. And, and that debate was related really more to the package of fees, not right. just the water fees. Right. It isn't just water. It's the, the <laughs> sand district right. fees. And, and, and so that we do not control. That's right. So when you put that package together for somebody starting up a business, you know, that's that's a that's a big gulp to get started on. And um, so I think we ha we need to look at that, be sensitive to that, see what that may be doing to any new upstarts. Right. Um, and and then, you know, but you know, we do understand the need for encouraging conservation, that's part of it, and then the water plant, and those are two big priorities. Right. And the uh, council committed themselves to having more discussion about this whole issue of uh, restaurants in particular, delis versus restaurants, and, yes. and how does it compare to the rest of the world out there and those type of things. Absolutely. Another little unintended consequence is that uh, if, if uh, restaurants choose to classify themselves as delis so that they don't have to pay the tap fee and use paper products, then we're kind of shooting ourselves in the foot when we're trying to encourage people to use uh, reusables. So. Right. Well, Elizabeth, our, anything else in the budget you'd like to highlight? Our property tax rate is going to be the lowest maybe ever, uh, 5.07 mils, right. down from about seven mils a few years ago. That had happened because we paid off some debt that we had on the golf course. In addition, because uh, property values were lower the past few years, that also caused it. But people looking for those low property rates might be happy when they get their tax bill this year from the assessor. Very, very low property taxes in Breckenridge. Yeah, and compared to the rest of the world, we're one of the lowest uh, in Colorado, right. uh, which is very nice. Front Range has a whole different scenario Correct. than we do, and that's because of that sales tax. That's right. 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 So. <laughs> Aren't we are so very grateful for. Yes. Um, one other affordable housing site I wanted to mention so the public's aware of it, because it's a good chance we may be able to move that one up, is the 450 property right. and, what, and we've talked about that before but remind people why that's going to be available. Sure so near 7-Eleven Highway 9 in Breck um, the recycling center is going to move over to the McCain property Coin Valley Road around that area um, so that's going to happen this upcoming summer so we're going to see the new recycling center and have the potential possibility to put some affordable housing in there with the county. Right, and they're going to be tearing down some buildings and they've right. moved everything else out. I think an ambulance building used to be right. there. Right, and a public works. Yep, yep, so those will be gone. So and that, again, would be another great location on the bus route. Mm -hmm. And really, so we hope to have some positive conversations with the county here um, going forward. Great, so another possible project that we'll be planning yes. and hopefully looking at before 
2016, maybe. Right. Right. Well, that, now so some fun stuff. We just got a, a well, let's start with uh, our own event first. Uh, our Breckenridge Grand Vacations Community Center is about to be ready to be occupied and open. In fact, I think it's they're moving in as, as we speak, but we have some uh, thinking about a, a, a uh, kickoff event uh, and some of the users within that may be having some activity. Elizabeth, you've probably been as close to it because your business happens to be one of the ones moving in there. Right. What's all the excitement about? Well, January 10th, <laughs> we are going to have the grand celebration. Is that what we've called it, Wendy? Right. The grand celebration of the Breckenridge Grand Vacations Community Center uh, beginning at 5.30 p.m. Uh, we're going to have the street closed off and invite people to come up. We're going to have a champagne toast and invite people in the building Really a great event. Um, I'll let Wendy talk more about the details. I was over there in that building today and scaffolding everywhere. They're putting in those last minute touches, getting electrical boxes and light fixtures in place at the last minute. The library's getting moved in. That is a major process to get a library moved, as you can imagine with all those books and shelving. But it is going to be a fantastic building. I am so proud of the town of Breckenridge for this amazing project in partnership with the county and so much of the community on the fundraising efforts of it and it is truly going to be one of our highlights and gems to show off and I was over there the speakeasy is getting ready to open it will be open uh, December 17th which is a Wednesday oh, quite exciting yes yeah. with the Hobbit which will be very exciting a huge holiday movie uh, to start with but I know people are so looking forward to that because it was so special to many people they've gone to the speakeasy for years so to have that community center we have a coffee shop opening up in there which is great and then some nonprofit offices and great building we invite everyone to come on January 10th and Wendy can talk about why they should come see us yep well, uh, you know, and I'll start first by uh, elaborating on the um, fundraising effort. You know, it's, it, it's spectacular. Um, you know, led by Breckenridge Grand Vacations, um, who donated uh, half a million dollars. And so um, that kind of uh, helped give us a huge boost. But we have had individual contributors. We've had grants. We've um, had, you know, businesses, the Restaurant Association. I, you know, the contributions came from you know, all folks in, in, in the community. And to date, it totals, I think the last I've heard is that we're at $2,083,000 um, in Fantastic. contributions. Mm -hmm. and, and so consequently, the building will be a bit of a legacy to all these contributors. You know, there'll be a lot of uh, names throughout the building and rec recognition of people who have contributed and, I, and it's gonna be very tastefully done. And, so that, along with the fact that the, it is a grand old building, 1909, okay. that was in need of a great restoration, and it's, you know, it's gonna uh, you know, come back to life, and uh, people will see some of the very original materials, some of which were covered up by sure. mm -hmm. you know, restoration, well. Windows in particular. Yes, <laughs> they, you, know, how, you know how buildings get, you know, uh, band-aids put on them over the years, and you know, so now this is really gonna be brought back to its uh, grand um, origins. And so we are, we're, we're gonna celebrate it from the outside in. We're gonna start you know, with, on the outside and appreciate the building and then move in and go look at every aspect of that building on January 10th. So that's one to mark on your calendar and make sure. For sure. Yeah, Saturday now, afternoon. Yeah. So none of it is haunted though, right? Oh, I don't, well, I wouldn't say that. Oh, well, okay. we'll have to have, <laughs> you'll have to come I don't. and see the Breck Heritage Alliance yes. there in their go, archive see. rooms and they can tell you. Yeah. I, since my office will be in that building, I'll let you know if there are any yeah. ghosts. Yeah, creaking but, or... Yeah, we'll see. The doors you know, that it's close. The <laughs> original floors upstairs on the third floor, or the original floors in that building, and they are so stunning. And the tin ceiling that is upstairs as well is just amazing. It's really a grand building. The name is so fitting. And another thing I wanted to point out is this building will have some great opportunities for public art. And this week I saw the new sculpture that was donated to the town that will go outside the Speakeasy Movie Theater. Again, it is stunning and breathtaking and how fortunate that this town is committed to the arts and what a great place to introduce people to art at this building as well. Let's mention the community room. 
How can that be used? <laughs> well, because that's a big piece of this also. You know, it, it, there's never a pla enough places in this town to hold your meetings. And so this will be the premier place to hold mm -hmm. a meeting. And um, it, it, it is a large, very versatile room. It has state-of-the-art uh, screens to use, to hook up your PowerPoint presentations or, um, you know, and the room can be configured in multiple ways and it is, uh, it, it, it allows for natural light to come in. It's a it, downstairs location, but it was very well designed. So, you, you know, you, I, don't, don't you hate it when you go into a meeting and <laughs> it's snowed Snow. three feet outside <laughs> and you don't know that until, you know, hours pass by. So this will not be like that. This will be a wonderful room. And, and the county will handle the booking process. Um, they do that for the commons down in Frisco. So, you know, so if you need to hold a meeting, you can call the county and see if you can book that room. And, it's, it'll and be the available. coffee shop will help, will serve Oh, coffee definitely, you know, yeah, yeah. That, yes, yes. <laughs> the adjacent coffee shop, you should be able to smell the coffee, coffee when you right head. <laughs> so you'll get your coffee and go to your meeting. So it'll be very, very exciting. So January 10th. Now, things earlier today or just at five o'clock? You know, I would tell people to get there by 5.15ish. You okay. know, 5.30, we're really gonna start because we wanna get people in that building quickly. It could be a blizzard. We just don't know how the weather will be on January 10th. So, you know, 5.15, get there, get ready to have your champagne and uh, toast the building and have some short speeches and then get inside and really see. Enjoy it. Yeah, we are going to try to turn on the lights all at once. We will see how that goes to <laughs> light the building up. Light it building. might be a Clark Griswold moment. We're not quite sure. <laughs> <laughs> we hope not. Yeah, we hope not. <laughs> yeah, I want to go there. Yeah. <laughs> well, another very exciting event we just heard about today, mm. as a matter of fact. Uh, we are again a recipient of a finish and a a time trial time trial yes. for the pro cycling that's, challenge. That's for, correct. We um, Breckenridge will be the site of stage four, and and so the uh, racers will be coming from Aspen. Uh, the, and and it's it, this has uh, this year it's going to be it seems to me like more high altitude riding and finishes at high altitude. Um, a Basin has a leg of it. Uh, Copper has a leg of it. It starts in Steamboat this year. Uh, so when it comes to Breckenridge, it'll be coming from Aspen. Uh, so to finish in town, the moon, they love Moonstone. So it will still include a loop up through up over Moonstone. So. Yep. <laughs> and, and then, yes, we, uh, we, the details are still being worked out, right. but um, we believe Moonstone is a part of that. And then, uh, so, so, so the 20th, which is a Thursday, I believe, yes. it, it comes into Breckenridge. And then Friday, we will have a time trap. And so they will remain in town. So this is, so it's a two day event for Breckenridge. So that's very exciting. They, they, the race has loved Breckenridge and, and we've loved the race. So uh, it's a good combination. From Breckenridge, the day after it's in Breckenridge is the day that the you know that the state you have the opportunity to suggest to the Pro Cycle Challenge uh, organizers what route you think it should take. So that will be the day after Breckenridge, and then and then the end will be Golden to Denver, which is pretty traditional, traditional for right. that race. Right. So it's exciting. It's shaping up. We don't know everything about it yet, but we're just learning today what the first details are. Yeah. So. so Aspen and Breck, I guess, have had it just about every year. Yeah, huh? just, yeah, every yeah. year. So we are lucky that they want to come here. And I think this is such a testament to our local organizing committee that helps run this along with the town, um, that really helps get this race here. They want to come back to Breck and be a part of it. But, and they tell us all the time, in fact, we just won an award for mm -hmm. best stage, which was exciting. I think best overall finish. And uh, we received a trophy for that. It was really cool. Um, but I think it says a lot about this town volunteers and people put their heart and soul into making this race happen and we use tons of volunteers tons of resources and it has paid off i mean i love seeing those streets filled with people and downtown is just alive well it's even more interesting to have two other places in summit county so it'll be a pretty oh, I, busy I week i love huh? that yes yeah. i mean i think that will continue to show to people that are just watching this on tv 
book your trip to Summit County, book your vacation here. I mean, you not only have Breckenridge, but a basin, copper. I mean, you just get to see a lot of yeah. it. So we are so lucky to highlight yeah. that. I'm, I'm not so sure about my bikini on the top of Loveland Pass. I, I'm, a, I, I'm thinking, I'm thinking not. It might be a little chilly. Yeah, <laughs> yeah. but it works I, on top of who's yeah. <laughs> But for those, but for those who love that sort of thing, I, you know, the, the challenge is out there. I mean, you are really gonna, you know, right. need your jacket over yeah. your bikini this year. Yeah, I without knowing the route, it sounds like a lot of passes, potentially. <laughs> right, well, and it's interesting. It's like the riders want to be challenged more, yeah. you know, which I think is great. I mean, they want to come back here and they all say how much they love coming to these mountain towns. And yeah, they want to be challenged and they're mm -hmm. going to get it. The yeah. mayor just loves giving off that you know, Uler helmet. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yes, yeah. yeah. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> so August. August and 20 and 21 yes. is when it will be in Brackish. Right. Yeah. But that whole week will be yeah. uh, starting the 17th. Again. So yeah. another exciting opportunity this summer. I know there'll be bike week will probably be right around that period. Right. So probably another great fun-filled adventure from July 4th oh, yeah. all the way through the rest of summer again. Definitely. Sure. A great, great end to August. August. Is, yeah. yeah. Worked out well, other than the weather was a little bit interesting last year. but. That's hey, part we of the always fun. make the most of it. That's part right. of the fun. It of is it. part of it. Okay, what have I missed? Anything of highlight that we should uh, hit real quick before we close off this segment of the show? Um, gosh, I think uh, you know, just everyone Come to ahead. have a happy holidays. Yes, this is the go. last yep. that we'll be together before the first of the yeah. year, and I think uh, you know we look forward to lots of activities in the first of the year. But we've had a great 2014. I, I agree. 2014 Fantastic. has been so wonderful in Breckenridge and. We are looking forward to 2015, another great year. Okay, just a reminder that uh, we have one meeting left this month, and that's uh, next Tuesday, the December 9th, and there won't be a second meeting, so mm -hmm. a little bit of hiatus for the council to get themselves re-energized <laughs> for 2015, and then starting in January, the second Tuesday in January will be our first meeting, and we'll know the results of marijuana ballot questions and mm -hmm. have probably a whole list of other topics that we'll be talking about. Great. That's right. I want to thank Wendy and Elizabeth for thank joining you. me here today. And again, wish you all a great holiday and we'll see you next month at Breck Buzz. What a pretty disaster you